Ladies and gentlemen, the Grand Marshal of Chestnut Hill College. Thank you. 
Good morning. Sister Michelle Lesher, class of 2000 and interim chief officer for mission and ministry will offer the invocation. God of active inclusive love, we arrive at this significant day with joyful hearts as we celebrate the inauguration of our seventh college president, Dr. William Latimer. We give you praise and thanks, O oh God, for guiding us to this momentous occasion. We humbly ask your blessing on this latest chapter in our nearly century-old story, a story that is still being written each day. We pray in gratitude for all those throughout the years whose faithfulness, perseverance, risk-taking, and unwavering support ensured today's occasion. Loving God, shower our president with every gift he needs to lead faithfully from the Chestnut Hill College in mission entrusted to him. Grant him wisdom, vision, discernment, and a steadfast commitment to the well-being and growth of our community. As he partners with the Sisters of St. Joseph in our mission of unioning love, give him every grace to be about the intricate work of weaving relationships. Fill him with your compassion, humility, and collaborative spirit. Grant in him an untiring desire to serve and inspire the members of our community to reach their fullest potential. Guiding Spirit, we ask your grace to be present in every decision and action taken by our president. Surround him with a supportive network of individuals who share his passion for transformative, holistic education. On this day, we also ask for your blessings on Dr. Latimer's family, his wife Maria, and his daughters Ava, Dorothy, and Willa. May they each flourish, and may they feel part of the fabric of this community too. Bless the Sisters of St. Joseph, our foundresses, whose mission continues to permeate and animate the life, spirit, and mission of Chestnut Hill College. And loving God, bless this entire community, our students, faculty, staff, administration, alumni, and board. May we find inspiration, encouragement, and support in our president's vision and leadership. Impel us to work collaboratively, fostering an environment where transformative education, just relationships, innovation, and a genuine care for one another and every kind of dear neighbor without distinction is truly possible. Empower us to reverence and celebrate our diversity foster inclusivity, and create an environment that sends us forth ever ready to take responsible action toward a more unified global society. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Please remain standing for the national anthem sung by Simon Bonifant. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in gave proof to the night that our flag was Hooray! 
Thank you so much, Simon, for leading us in the national anthem. I see the color guard has already taken charge of their colors, and you may all be seated. Thank you. Members of the board, Chestnut Hill College administration, faculty, staff, our devoted alumni and alumni, students, distinguished guests, friends, and the cherished family of Dr. William Latimer. A heartfelt and warm welcome to Chestnut Hill College on this special day. We are truly honored to have you all join us for this momentous occasion, the inauguration of our college's seventh president. We extend our deep gratitude to you for choosing to be a part of this extraordinary event. We also want to express our sincere appreciation for the president, presence of our state representative, Tarek Khan, State Senator Amanda Capaletti, Class of 2010, Philadelphia Councilwoman Cindy Bass, and Wallace Weaver, Chief of Staff for Senator Haywood. Their support is a testament to the strong connections that Chestnut Hill College maintains with our wider community. In addition, we are deeply thankful for the leadership and presence of our two former college presidents who grace us with their presence here today, Sister Carol Jean Vale and Sister Matthew Anita. Your continued involvement and guidance are invaluable to us. Your collective presence here today embodies the unwavering unity and unwavering commitment that defines our exceptional institution. Thank you for joining us on this special day. Formal ceremonies such as this inauguration uplift the spirit of the college community. They serve as a radiant beacon, drawing in our cherished alumni, generous donors, and friends from well beyond our immediate community. An inauguration is far more than a mere ceremony. It is a powerful declaration of our shared vision for the future of Chestnut Hill College. It signifies all of our steadfast commitment to charting a course that unites all of our constituents in pursuit of an even brighter future and more promising vision. Our purpose here today extends beyond the inauguration of Dr. Latimer as our new president of, or his commitment to our cherished college's mission and values. We are gathered here to reaffirm our own steadfast dedication to Chestnut Hill College and to honor the profound legacy of the Sisters of St. Joseph. As you listen to our esteemed guest speakers and engage in the events on this momentous day, I encourage you, all of you, to please reflect on your own dreams and aspirations for our future of our beloved institution. Consider how your own contributions align with the, these aspirations and consider how your support of President Latimer can propel Chestnut Hill College toward even greater heights. Later, you will have the opportunity to reaffirm that commitment to President Latimer's mission during the investiture ceremony. Today, we celebrate not just the investiture of a new president, but also the enduring spirit of Chestnut Hill College and the unity of this community as we boldly and optimistically forge ahead together. Thank you all for joining us in this historic celebration of promise and potential. Now, Senator Art Haywood is a longtime friend of Chestnut Hill College. He and his staff embody the college's mission and values in how they represent the people of this great commonwealth. Making remarks today on behalf of Senator Haywood, please greet Wallace Wheaton, the communications director for Senator Haywood. Good morning. My name is Wallace Weaver, Communications Director for State Senator Art Haywood, who proudly serves District 4 here in Northwest Philadelphia and parts of Montgomery County. Thank you to the Board of Directors and the Sisters of St. Joseph's for inviting the office to mark such a momentous occasion. Senator Haywood is out of state today, celebrating his father's 95th birthday this weekend. 
While he could not be here today, he is immensely honored to be invited to celebrate the inauguration of Chestnut Hill College's seventh president. I am happy to share remarks on behalf of the senator. Senator Haywood has met Dr. Latimer on several occasions. He was impressed by Dr. Latimer's warm spirit. He is confident that Dr. Latimer brings the right mindsets and character that reflects the charisms of the Sisters of St. Joseph and that his leadership will lead Chestnut Hill College into a bright future. Senator Haywood is glad to find alignment with Dr. Latimer in their mutual aim to increase access to higher education, particularly for diverse communities and those who have been historically disadvantaged. Our office is excited to partner with Chestnut Hill College where this alignment exists to strengthen community partnerships, increase high school outreach, and much more. For over 98 years, Chestnut Hill College has been the staple of the Northwest Philadelphia region. On behalf of the Office of Senator Art Haywood, we are confident that under Dr. Latimer's leadership, the college will only grow and expand upon this proud legacy. Congratulations, Dr. Latimer. We wish you much success in your new role. God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Reaver, for delivering those inspiring remarks on behalf of Senator Haywood. We thank you for joining us on this momentous day. And please extend our gratitude to the Senator for his commitment to our shared values. Representative Tarek Khan was only just elected to his great office. However, he is already proving himself to be an energetic leader and an advocate for social justice. During his short time in office, he has befriended befriended Chestnut Hill College and the Latimer family. Please welcome Senator, uh, I'm sorry, Representative Tariq Khan. Thank you so much. Today, as one extraordinary chapter in Philadelphia's history closes, another one opens. This morning, I was present at the funeral of President of Temple University, Joanne Epps. And when I was at the funeral service this morning, I saw our mayor, Mayor Jim Kenney. And we both reflected on the life of President Epps. And Mayor Kenney knew President Epps a lot longer than I did. And he said she was one of the most incredible people that I've ever met. And he said that it's not often that you get to tell people that you love them, but before I saw her last, I told her that. And I think that's an important message for us to keep with us. And one of the things that President Epps said that resonates with me, and I think it resonates with a lot of people, was that if the cure for cancer is in the mind of a young girl in North Philadelphia, then we have got to find her and make sure she has the opportunity to make that discovery. And I can tell you that President Bill Latimer shares that type of vision for Chestnut Hill and for Philadelphia. As a fellow scientist, as a fellow Philadelphian, as a fellow rookie leader, I am incredibly grateful that we have President Latimer during this time to lead Chestnut Hill. And I want to read a citation from the House of Representatives in honor of President Latimer assuming his role today. Whereas on this day, September 29, 2023, stands as the inauguration of Dr. Bill Latimer as the seventh president of Chestnut Hill College of Philadelphia. And whereas prior to this appointment, Dr. Latimer established a distinguished career in higher education, serving in various roles from faculty to administration to several uni universities and institutions, including the College of New Rochelle, City University of New York, Lehman College, the University of Florida, John Hopkins University, and Mercy College Bronx campus. And whereas Dr. Latimer's bold leadership, including his collective an inclusive approach 
will enhance diversity and inclusion across the college and will buttress the financial well-being of the college, nurturing an environment that supports students and faculty excellence and will improve our commonwealth. And whereas in his first year of acting president, those values shown through demonstrated clearly in Dr. Latimer's work to organize efforts to provide for our mother of consolation parish school after a horrible fire overtook their facilities. Can we get a hand, by the way, for that effort here? Now, therefore, it be resolved on this day, September 29, 2023, Representative Tarakan, that's me, of the 194th District of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania honors and celebrates Dr. William Latimer as he is officially inaugurated as the seventh president of Chestnut Hill College. Thank you so much, Representative Khan, for that rousing uh, remarks that we're very grateful. And we thank you for your, pres your friendship as well as your good humor. <laughs> Mayor Jim Kinney uh, grew up in South Philadelphia as one of five children. His father was a firefighter and his mother was a stay-at-home mom. He grew up fully appreciative of the value of a Catholic education because his parents managed somehow to put all five children through Catholic school, from elementary school to college and beyond. Mayor Kinney sadly is unable to join us in person today. However, he took the time to send the following pre-recorded message. Please turn your attention to the screens above. Good afternoon. Today is a special day. At Chestnut Hill College, it does not take long to identify a special feeling about this place. There is a sense of family that is pervasive as you walk the hallways and meet new people. The openness to one another is an inherent part of the mission and values of this college. You demonstrate that mission and values with your words, but more importantly, with how you treat one another. Everyone at Chestnut Hill College, all of you, support one another in the mutual goal to create new opportunities through the power of education and enrichment. That is a powerful vehicle that will take the students and their families farther in life than they could have imagined. They are positive citizens of the world because you teach them to be advocates for their community as you are advocates for the, for, for the community. The Sisters of St. Joseph excel in the area of social advocacy and Chestnut Hill College continues this tradition today. Dr. Latimer, you stand on the shoulders of the great women before you. It takes a lot of courage to answer the call to be the college's seventh president. Having met you, I can honestly say that you have the courage and the vision to take Chestnut Hill College into this new era. I wish you every success in your journey together. God bless all of you and know that you have a friend at City Hall. Though we are unable to thank Mayor Kenny for his thoughtful and kind message to all of us today, we note that uh, he has been doing a great deal of work at City Hall and we thank him for that. We are blessed by his thoughtfulness in sending us some personal thoughts for this day. Our next distinguished guest has been a partner of Chestnut Hill College for quite a long time through his service at SEPSHI, the Southeastern Pennsylvania Consortium of Higher Education. In addition to his service to higher education, Dr. Middleman has received numerous honors from the United States Navy for his decorated service. Please join us in welcoming Dr. Michael H. Middleman. Good morning, Chestnut Hill College Chair Moulton, Sister Maureen Erden, Congressional President of the Sisters of St. Joseph, President Emerita, Sister Carol Jean Vale, my favorite people, Sister Matthew Anita McDonald, fifth president of the college, our esteemed Sisters of St. Joseph, Chestnut Hill College Board of Trustees, Chestnut Hill College community, and distinguished guest. I am truly honored and delighted to offer collective greetings and best wishes on behalf of the presidents of the Southeastern Pennsylvania Consortium for Higher Education, 
which is a regional consortium of colleges and universities that is totally committed to improving the quality and efficiency of academic programming, student success, faculty development, institutional operations, and community outreach through a range of shared activities, services, technology, and information. Together, we re represent roughly 13,000 students, faculty, and staff across the Philadelphia region and are proud to include Chestnut Hill College, Arcadia University, Holy Family University, Manor College, our newest member, Newman University, Rosemont College, and Salis University, my academic home. To Dr. Bill Latimer, Bill, hearty congratulations on your appointment as the seventh president of Chestnut Hill College. In assuming the mantle of responsibility of president, you do so, and I know this, with an exceptional team of faculty and staff whose eth ethic of generosity and commitment to collaboration are respected and admired across our SEPSI campuses. The success of our consortium initiatives spanning undergraduate research, career development, student life, honors programs, diversity, equity, and inclusion, library and administrative services are truly owed to the active and committed leadership of our Chestnut Hill College faculty and staff. Together, we have provided student, faculty, and professional staff experiences that no single campus can provide alone. Over our past quarter century of SEPSHI's existence, our collaborative work has focused on really one thing, and that's our students. Through SEPSHI, we continue to serve our students better and more efficiently than any single campus can do alone. Bill, I know I speak for all of us when I say we truly look forward to working with you to advance this critical and collective mission. SEPSHI presidents and I join in congratulating you and, Sep and Chestnut Hill College on your inauguration. Our very best wishes for future success. Thank you so much, Dr. Middleman. It isn't, we're, you have proven to us that we are stronger when we all work together. We're grateful. It is an honor to introduce Dr. David Contasta, esteemed professor of history at Chestnut Hill College. Dr. Contasta is a celebrated author of 20 books and counting. It is worth noting that Dr. Contasta has served Chestnut Hill College since 1978. Please welcome Dr. David Contasta. Thank you, Kathy. And uh, Dr. Middleman sort of stole my thunder a little bit because I was going to thank all the people that he did and reference all the people that he did, so I won't go on and on. But I'm delighted to be here this morning to represent the faculty and to wish Dr. Latimer well as he undertakes this presidency of Chestnut Hill College. I'm going to talk a little bit about mission today, and since I've been here a long time, I guess I understand the mission a bit. Mission is the glue that holds an institution together, connecting past, present, and future. Without a strong sense of mission, a college can only stagger along as if in the dark, without inspiration or goals. Here at Chestnut Hill College, our mission is grounded in the inspiration, commitment, and continued dedication of the founding and sustaining Sisters of St. Joseph. As such, the college is committed to holistic education through helping students to understand themselves and the world around them, and in the process to acquire the tools to continue learning and growing throughout their lives. Just relationships by respecting the dignity of all persons and upholding diversity, equity, inclusion, and truth. Innovative thinking, which is critical to searching for solutions to personal, local, and global challenges. Responsible action, especially through practicing stewardship of the earth at a time of rapid and dangerous climate change. Animated spiritual life, promoting reconciliation and inclusive love through interfaith dialogue and prayer. I believe that Chestnut Hill College, with its 100 years of dedication to the liberal arts, is extraordinarily well positioned to realize these goals. 
I've always liked to call the liberal arts as the liberating arts, for they free us to know ourselves and by doing so to respect the full humanity of others in an ever-changing world. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Contasta, for sharing your thoughts on the college's mission and values with all of us. Through education in the liberating arts, we hope to increase responsible action and innovative thinking throughout the world. We are grateful to you for your example in that regard. Our next honored speaker is truly a friend to everyone here at Chestnut Hill College. Nancy DeKille has served Chestnut Hill College as the Director of Career Development for 27 years so far. Additionally, she teaches at the college as an adjunct professor of psychology. But more importantly, Nancy Tekili helps to advance the mission of the Sisters of St. Joseph as an associate in mission. It is this work that will help the work of the sisters to live on in perpetuity. Please join me in offering a warm welcome to Nancy Tekili. Good morning, everyone. Dr. Latimer, distinguished guests, Sisters of St. Joseph, our board of directors, faculty, staff, and all friends of Chestnut Hill College. Thank you to the inauguration committee for inviting me to represent the staff on this momentous occasion. As we embark upon the cusp of so many new and exciting initiatives, I cannot help but reflect upon the strength of the community here at Chestnut Hill College. Our strength lies in the support we share amongst all stakeholders and is a hallmark of Chestnut Hill College rooted in the foundation and mission of the Sisters of St. Joseph, which says, we live and work so that all people may be united with God and one another. It is because we have always been such a resilient organization that we have been able to form lasting bonds at all levels that we can leverage to develop into new and exciting paths. Over the many years the college has been in existence, an entire century next year, administrators, faculty, staff, and students have formed lifelong relationships. These relationships have continued on with the many alumni of our college who have been extremely generous, not only with their resources, but with their time and talent. In the words of my dear friend, Sister Marilyn Ryan, it's all about relationships. It is because of these connections that we have been able to enrich the experiences of our students. I have personally benefited from being part of the special community for over two decades and cherish the relationships that have made such an impact on my life and all who have graced these halls. Dr. Latimer, as we embark on our next century, with your leadership and vision, we are all excited to be part of a shared vision for the future based on a culture of compassion and inclusivity, which is the legacy and the charism of the Sisters of St. Joseph. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. DeKille, for those beautiful remarks. You are so correct that relationships are at the center of our work here at Chestnut Hill College. We are blessed by your own example in sustaining relationships. At this time, we would like to pause briefly so that we might enjoy a musical reflection chosen by President Latimer. Our own Dr. Joseph Kolkuski, professor of biology, will be joined by cellist Christine Mello, and violinist Carlo, Carlo Santiago. They will play Cavatina.
Thank you, Dr. Kolkowski, Christine Mello, and Carlos Santiago for that beautiful musical intercession. We're truly grateful. It is with great pride that I introduce the, our next speaker, Christina Diaz Acuff, class of 2015. Ms. Diaz Acuff is well known throughout the Chestnut Hill College community and to the Sisters of St. Joseph for her work and service in both organizations. She is an associate of mission of the Sisters of St. Joseph. Today, Ms. Diaz Acuff serves Chestnut Hill College as the Alumni Association President. Please welcome Christina Diaz Acuff. Esteemed guests, faculty, staff, fellow alums, Sisters of St. Joseph, and Griffins. Today, as the president of the Chestnut Hill College Alumni Association, it is my profound honor and pleasure to represent alumni in this moment of our college's history, the inauguration of our seventh president. President Latimer, on behalf of all alums, welcome to our loved Chestnut Hill. As you continue to meet alumni in your work, you will familiarize yourself with Griffins of all different perspectives, cultures, and backgrounds from dozens of states and even countries. Though we are all unique, a commonality we alumni share is our significant decision to get a liberal arts education at Chestnut Hill College. Students here are given a unique experience to come together to learn from and with each other, to become innovative and informed thinkers dedicated to the service of others, to civility, to right action, and to the spiritual dimension of life. As Sister Maria Koskalog could not have more perfectly said, when the college first opened, Chestnut Hill College will, pre will prepare you to learn how to earn a living because you must, but you are here to learn how to live. For almost a century, Chestnut Hill College alumni have been taking the formative experiences and learnings from this diverse community and applying them in every aspect of our lives. Our alumni are confident workers and responsible citizens. We think in revolutionary ways while working towards a more unified global society. Our alums change the world for the better while never forgetting the profound impact our Chestnut Hill College education has had on our lives. We love Chestnut Hill. Chestnut Hill College has so generously given to the members of this community but let us remember that it was the voices and the collaborative efforts of Sisters of St. Joseph, alumni, students, faculty, and staff that brought Chestnut Hill to be the inclusive and forward-thinking institution of higher learning that it is today. Let us pledge to, continuing, to continue foster, fostering an environment where every voice is valued, where our differences are our greatest strength, and where together we can make new paths to a brighter future. As a Chestnut Hill College community, let us continue to change the world through the power of our differences. Thank you, and may our alma mater continue to flourish under the guidance of our new president. Thank you, Christina Diaz Acuff, class of 2015. Your use of Sister Maria Casca Logue's instruction that we are here to learn how to live is a great reminder to all of us that it is not what we do, but it is how we do it. Cheryl Ann Watkins is a junior in the School of Undergraduate Studies. She is studying mathematics with a minor in computer science. In her spare time, Cheryl Ann participates in the college's Quidditch team as their manager. Cheryl Ann will deliver her reflection on what Chestnut Hill College means to her. Please welcome Cheryl Ann Watkins to the podium. When I first came to Chestnut Hill College, I wasn't anticipating the, the way this place would change my life. I never thought a school would feel like a home until I came here. 
When I was a freshman, I went through the front gate archway with trepidation, afraid this institution may not be a good fit for me. I have been here three years now, and I would say that those fears were not necessary. I have soared here, just like my classmates have, as have those before me. The college, seemingly ostentatious and big from the outside, is actually small and welcoming, which I see as advantageous for students. The professors, advisors, and staff are all dedicated to helping you. All you need to do is ask. Because CHC is a relatively small college, going to your professor is as easy as stopping by their office, where they will greet you by name and offer you help for as long as you need. I have never felt this valued before. I truly feel like a member of this community and not just a number. The school makes it easy to take advantage of opportunities available to anyone on an even playing field. I recently sat with some of my peers, curious as to why they chose Chestnut Hill to pursue their degrees and to position themselves for their future careers. What I found was an underlying theme. Everyone talked about the connections that they have made here, the feeling that you are given a supporting hand throughout your time here. Our professors were not only helpful, but fundamental in our college life journeys. Their advice helped us to be confident in who we are and in pursuing what we want to do in choosing to attend this college. My peers and I found that acceptance was easily given, and we were all openly and warmly enveloped within Griffin Nation. I, like so many of my peers, am proud to call Chestnut Hill College my second home. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl Ann, for that beautiful reflection. This is indeed your second home, and we are your family. Sister Maureen Erdlin is the co current Congregational President of the Sisters of St. Joseph of Philadelphia. During her first four years as President, she has been a terrific partner to Chestnut Hill College as the Vice Chair of the Board and the Co-Chair of the Presidential Search Committee. Additionally, she has had a key role in the transition towards a new President by working in partnership to guide the board's bylaws, policies, and procedures to reflect the realities of having a layperson as the college's president. Please welcome Sister Maureen Erdlin. Good morning. Over the past 100 years, thousands of Sisters of St. Joseph have walked these sacred halls in pursuit of their own higher education. Almost 200 have served as faculty and staff, six of whom were sister presidents. I humbly represent those women whose purpose simply was and is to live and work so that all people may be united with God and one another. Through their efforts and blessed with the partnership of outstanding faculty committed staff, and dedicated board members, Chestnut Hill College has become a community of radical inclusion, welcoming a diversity of cultures, nationalities, races, genders, and religious traditions. Holistic education has long been a priority for us, especially education of underserved communities. Committed to the formation of character, as well as the development of intellect, this college has transformed the lives of thousands of young people. We entrust this community to you, Dr. Latimer. We ask God's spirit to fill your mind and your heart so that you will govern wisely, collaboratively, compassionately, and creatively. We ask you to cherish these young women and men so that their minds will be stretched and challenged and their hearts will be burning within them to make our world a more just and humane place for all. Encourage their dreams and nourish their souls so that they may, as we've heard many times over these past few days, learn how to live, to live responsibly with concern for our global society and our fragile earth. On behalf of the Congregation of the Sisters of St. Joseph, we offer you our support so that you may provide an example to the entire community of what it means to be dear neighbor to all.
God be with you and all of us. Thank you, Sister Maureen, for your reflection and for your leadership in radical inclusion. Our next speaker is a dear friend of Chestnut Hill College. As the president of Fontbonne College, she has been a member of the Association of Colleges of the Sisters of St. Joseph. She, Dr. Nancy Blotner has been a dedicated advocate for Catholic higher education since she began her work at Fontbonne College as vice president in 2004. Please welcome Dr. Nancy Blotner. On this auspicious occasion, I'm honored to bring greetings from the Association of the Colleges of the Sisters of St. Joseph, and in particular from Fontbonne University in St. Louis, one of the nine extant colleges and universities founded by the Sisters of St. Joseph, and where I've been humbled and honored to serve as the president. Having previously served as the president of Caldwell University in New Jersey, another D2 institution that, like Chestnut Hill, participates in the CAC uh, athletic Conference, I've previously had the pleasure of being on your campus many times. And because of your former president, Sister Carol Jean Vale, whom I hold in the highest regards, she offered me a lifeline when I was the president at Caldwell in the form of sprint football. So I've always had a very special place in my heart for this wonderful college. But during the past year, I have had the privilege to come to know, respect, and admire Bill Latimer, who now serves as this college's seventh president and first lay president. In his YouTube video, which is on your website, Bill speaks of the privilege that he feels to be part of this community in which every member strives to exemplify the institution's core values and to live in service to the dear neighbors those values and that commitment to serve not only the campus community, but as we've heard, the broader population of this city, exemplify the best of what a Catholic institution founded by the Sisters of St. Joseph offers. As Bill and I have talked throughout the past year, we have forged a bond through our discussions about the need for the type of faith-based and value-laden education that is offered by both Chestnut Hill and by Fontbonne his commitment to your college, to your mission, and the students whom you serve, to the institution's Catholic identity and the excellent academic reputation you, you have and the experience that you offer is perfectly framed by his statement, which I read on your college's landing website and which I want to quote from briefly. It is this powerful interplay, he said, of the living mission and legacy of the Sisters of St. Joseph combined with a leading liberal arts education set within the vibrancy of Philadelphia that sets the Chestnut Hill College experience apart. And then he continues, a liberal arts education has never been more invaluable or more necessary to the health and to the well-being of our collective future. I believe all of us recognize that our world is in desperate need of graduates of our institutions who are willing to embrace the charism of the sisters, and we are equally in search of presidents who are willing to take on the challenges of leading a college in this turbulent and chaotic world that higher education has become. So next year, 2024, is your centennial a pivotal time to celebrate the institution's history and tradition while looking ahead to the future with a new vision and this your new president. Chestnut Hill is blessed. Bill is an experienced leader who has held positions as an inaugural chair, served as a founding dean, worked as a vice president and a president of other private and faith-based institutions. He's held a distinguished professorship demonstrated experience in strategic planning and program development. He is a passionate supporter of the liberal arts, academic excellence, and shared governance. Furthermore, he has demonstrated compassion for students while completing a strong record of scholarship, publications, grant awards. Bill is truly a servant leader, an academic, and a visionary. 
and my last two paragraphs are missing, but I know what I wanted to say. <laughs> I wanted to speak to his wife, Maria, and to their three children, Ava, Dorothy, and Willa, because you are Bill's strongest support. And in this time, when being a college president is so incredibly difficult and so very stressful, you make the sacrifice for Bill, your husband, and your father, so that he can make the sacrifice for all of you. I am very pleased and honored to be Bill's colleague as I continue to serve with him at one of the Sisters of St. Joseph institutions. I ask for God's blessing on Chestnut Hill and for on Bill as he continues to lead you boldly, to serve humbly, and to fulfill the mission of the Sisters of St. Joseph. May God bless you all. Thank you, Dr. Blotner, for your kind words about your confidence in President Latimer's leadership and dedication to Chestnut Hill College. We look forward to many more years of friendship in our shared work together in support of the next generation of leaders, and I thank you for your grace. The Great Seal of Chestnut Hill College represents our core values, fides, caritas, ciencia. Fides, or faith, is represented by the silver carpenter square in our Great Seal. President Latimer's oldest daughter, Ava, carries a lantern as a demonstration of the faith that we have in God at the center of everything that we strive to do here at Chestnut Hill College. Walter Farmer carries a silver carpenter square as a representation of St. Joseph. Today, Fides calls to mind our faith that President Latimer has been sent to Chestnut Hill College at this unique moment in our history. Fides also demonstrates our commitment to living out the ethical and moral dimensions that underpin all relationships, embodying mutual respect. President Latimer, do you commit yourself to deepening your relationships within the Chestnut Hill College community? Thank you. Honored guests, do you pledge to guide Dr. Latimer in the ways of our mission and core values and to assist him and his family in forging new relationships within the Chestnut Hill community? If so, please answer, we will. Caritas, or charity, is represented by the lilies in our great seal. President Latimer's middle daughter, Dorothy, carries a lantern as a demonstration of Chestnut Hill College's commitment to charity as a core value. Desiree Johnson and Polly Teddy carry the lilies. Throughout the college's 99-year history, those working at the college have been dedicated to educating the underserved to improving the community, and to public service. President Latimer, will you pledge to continue to educate the underserved, to inspire public service and social justice, and to improve the live of, lives of others consistent with our core values? Thank you. Honored guest, will you pledge to support President Latimer in his work to continue the acts of charity that are consistent with the core values of Chestnut Hill College? If so, please say, we will. Ciencia, or knowledge, is represented by a book in our great seal. President Latimer's youngest daughter, Willa, and his wife, Dr. Maria Kahn Latimer, carry lanterns as a demonstration of our commitment to increasing the knowledge of all we serve. Sister Mary Jo Larkin carries the Book of Knowledge as represented in our Great Seal. Our dedication to learning is inclusive of continuing education for our faculty and staff, as well as our students who attend the School of Graduate Studies, 
the School of Continuing and Professional Studies, and the School of Undergraduate Studies. President Latimer, will you pledge to continue to advance the education of all those we serve as a lifelong commitment and to strive to improve the academic excellence at Chestnut Hill College? Thank you. Honored guest, do you pledge to support President Latimer in his work to educate all those we serve and to work to improve the academic excellence of Chestnut Hill College. If so, please say we will. Dr. Latimer, thank you, Sister Maureen. Thank you to our musical guests. Joining us today to introduce President Latimer is Dr. Kiana Brown. President Latimer first met Dr. Brown when they worked together on their doctoral degrees at Johns Hopkins University. There, President Latimer recruited Dr. Brown to work in the T32 Institutional Training Program funded by the National Institute for Health. Today, Dr. Kiana Brown is serving Rutgers University as an assistant professor in the School of Social Work, where she directs the Substance Abuse Research, Evaluation, and Maternal and Child Health Group at the Center for Prevention Science. Her focus is on the prevention of prenatal substance abuse. Please welcome Dr. Kiana Brown. It is my honor and my privilege to introduce my mentor, my colleague, my friend, the seventh president of Chestnut Hill College, Dr. William Latimer. I first met Dr. Latimer 14 years ago in 2009 when I was a PhD student studying epidemiology in his National Institutes of Health funded drug dependence epidemiology training program at Johns Hopkins University. And his career and character have inspired me ever since. Dr. Latimer is a world renowned scientist his research has contributed to population health in the U.S. and abroad. He's an extraordinary administrator. He can do in a week what most people take years to do. His sheer will and motivation can move mountains, but he's never been satisfied with individual success. He motivates and empowers everyone around him to achieve greatness. On countless occasions, his direct mentorship and the example that he has set has inspired and motivated me. And Dr. Lattimore, I want to take this time to publicly thank you for the impact your guidance has had on my career. Thank you. In Chestnut Hill College, I want to congratulate you I want to congratulate you on choosing Dr. Lattimore to lead this exceptional institution as president. What you're getting is a visionary, someone with the courage to dream big, plan, set goals, execute the vision, and hit targets no one thought possible. What you're getting is someone who will put the mission of this organization first always. What you're getting is a servant leader, 
someone passionate about partnering with and creating better conditions for people and populations that have been forgotten, hidden, disenfranchised, or marginalized. What you're getting is an open-minded leader who will collaborate with students, faculty, staff, and administration to give this organization a strategic advantage to accomplish its goals. What you're getting is an innovator, someone who will stand in a gap to ensure that this organization doesn't fail. Chestnut Hill College, President Latimer, I want to leave you with this passage from Habakkuk, chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables, for he may run that readeth it, for the vision is yet for an important time. Chestnut Hill College, the time for the vision is now. It is your time to achieve all of the things that you've been waiting for, and you have the right leader at the helm to help you do it. Dr. Latimer, friend, it is your time as well. Chestnut Hill College, please welcome your president, Dr. William Latimer. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Thank you, Kiana. Welcome to faculty, students, and staff. I am, uh, I am deeply humbled and deeply grateful to serve as your seventh president. Uh, truly uh, an, uh, the greatest honor of my life, and I am deeply appreciative. I want to thank Dr. Nancy Blattner, who, like uh, Sister Carol, mentored uh, Nancy. Nancy has mentored me, and I have so deeply val valued her friendship uh, over the last year, and I'm so grateful uh, that she's here with us today. I want to thank Dr. Kiana Brown. Uh, I want to thank the board. I want to thank the Sisters of St. Joseph that founded this college in 1924 as a women's college to serve those that didn't have opportunities to attend college. And over the roughly 100 years, 98 years of this institution, if you look at the students that we serve today, we, that mission is absolutely alive and well. I also want to uh, acknowledge and thank uh, Sister Carol and Sister Matthew Anita, who are here with us today that represent 42 years of leadership of this college. You know, when I first started here, uh, you know, Sister Carol and I would have an occasional lunch and talk, but really as the months passed, I started to call her not infrequently. And she was always sage and kind and supportive and deeply helpful in terms of her support and guidance and thoughts. So I cannot thank her enough. I also want to acknowledge Sister Draru, who's here with us today, who is the director and head of ASEC, uh, a really wonderful, there, there she is in the back. An incredible mission uh, that was founded by Sister Carol uh, in terms of uh, her leadership. I would like to share with you today some thoughts about the nature of freedom. In the early 1990s, I had the opportunity to attend a speech given by one of my childhood heroes, Kurt Vonnegut, who was delivering a commencement address in New England. Like many adolescents of my generation, I was introduced to player piano and cat's cradle during English class in my public middle school outside of Schenectady, New York, 
where my mother Arlene and my grandmother Bertha attended St. Joseph's Academy during an era when all the teachers were still Carondelet Sisters of St. Joseph. I anticipated that his remarks would be satirical given the literary critics who defined his work as being characterized by gallows humor and dystopian landscapes occupied by anti-heroes of the 1950s and 60s. What followed for me was both unexpected and equally beautiful, just like one of his novels. His primary point, and I am paraphrasing, the greatest experiment in the history of humankind is the United States of America and the republic on which it stands. I was surprised. How could an author who decried the falsity of nationalism champion the guiding principles of a single country? Vonnegut suggested that the United States of America, despite all its flaws, of which there are countless many, has been defined by a gradual evolution toward the exceedingly difficult challenge of engendering freedom and equality across all persons. His remarks called to mind one of my favorite professors, also from that era, Dr. Maxine Green of Teachers College in New York City, who had recently published The Dialectic of Freedom around the time I was her student. In The Dialectic of Freedom, Maxine Green states, it must be clear that the mere assertion of freedom as a natural right guarantees little. Freedom cannot be conceived apart from a matrix of social, economic, cultural, and psychological conditions. It is within the matrix that selves take shape and are created through choice of action. What stood out for me then and still does today are two phrases. Freedom as a natural right guarantees little, and selves are created through choice of action. Like so many students, including those here at Chestnut Hill College, who I know feel the same way about Sister Mary Helen, Sister Marilyn, Jeffrey Carroll, Sister Rita, and so many more faculty and staff who provide a deeply nurturing and caring environment, I was deeply appreciative to have the opportunity to learn from Dr. Green. I still remember the first time I went to her office, knees shaking uh, to have a conversation with one of my heroes, and she was just so lovely and so incredibly smart. Yet while I was young and while earnest in my studies, looking back, I know now that I lacked the experience necessary to fully appreciate the depth of what Dr. Green and Kurt Vonnegut were saying. Later journeys would provide a greater appreciation of the great experiment and the significance of responsible action that defines self. In the early 2000s, I was blessed with the opportunity to work with Anne Gloria Maleko at the University of Pretoria in post-apartheid South Africa on projects funded by the National Institutes of Health. Over a period of 15 or so years, our work together sought to reduce HIV prevention among young women residing in Johannesburg and Pretoria. We worked with treatment centers that served 10,000 or more HIV positive patients with one medical doctor and a small staff of allied health professionals. This was when antiretroviral medication was in its infancy, and as such, HIV disease was still a death sentence. We were working on several fronts simultaneously, including efforts to develop behavioral interventions to prevent HIV while also studying risk and protective factors associated with disease transmission in the hope that we might improve the efficacy of our interventions. Of the variety of protective factors we examined, we learned that college attendance served as a potent protective factor against contracting HIV, even while controlling for a variety of potential confounding influences. As a result, 
we began to employ HIV-positive women who served as mentors to HIV-negative high school age girls to get them into college. I recall one woman in her 20s who mentored and followed the progress of a teen who successfully enrolled and later graduated from a local university. Keep in mind that even getting to college was extraordinary. Settlements designated squatter camps were falsely labeled as temporary housing in which tens of thousands of families lived their lives with no basic public health infrastructure, no clean water, no public sewer system. This young woman did not contract HIV, despite the fact that one in five of her peers were contracting HIV each year. And while part of the story of freedom, characterized by responsible action, certainly focuses on the journey of a young woman who successfully beat the odds, another central biography was that of the mentor. A young woman herself who had all the promise that anyone might have had, and more, and then contracted a deadly disease through absolutely no fault of her own under the most terrible of circumstances, yet her own self-created through choice of action was to help others to escape the violence that she had experienced. Her unparalleled bravery provided me with a far deeper understanding of the lesson that I could not fully understand earlier. While each of us as individually and all of us as a community have witnessed so many assaults against freedom in recent years, with unspeakable acts of deliberate violence and daily acts of incivility wrought from ignorance, exclusion, hatred, and racism, for me, the unparalleled bravery and selflessness that I witnessed in South Africa and that I now witness each day at Chestnut Hill College give me hope for the future. This past May, Chestnut Hill College celebrated its 96th commencement, graduating more than 200 undergraduate, graduate, and adult students. Many were first-generation college students. Many were students who, by their own report, never thought they would make it to college, let alone graduate. One of the student speakers thoughtfully expressed the range of challenges she faced to make it to Chestnut Hill College and how welcomed and accepted she felt during her time here that was central to her success. The warmth, intelligence, humility, and pure gratitude toward the faculty and staff were palpable in her remarks. I think it is nearly impossible to convey in words alone the truly sacred work that is enacted at Chestnut Hill College on a daily basis with a trajectory that spans nearly 100 years and has radically transformed the lives of so many who have gone on to embody the charisms of the Sisters of St. Joseph, who founded the college in 1924 and in so doing also embody the nature of freedom, characterized by the articulation of self through responsible action. I believe this because I believe that higher education is a direct expression of the nature of freedom. I believe this because I believe that a liberal arts education at Chestnut Hill College, enlivened by the charisms and legacy of the Sisters of St. Joseph, is a direct expression of the nature of freedom. Dr. Catherine Alicia Georges delivered a call to action during her commencement address to Chestnut Hill College graduates this past May, which I repeat here now that when more and more of us are intimately involved in what happens in this country, we will set in motion an unstoppable tsunami of change. I believe this call to action is also a call to freedom. And like Dr. George's, who has devoted an unparalleled career of distinction in the field of nursing, I look forward to bringing highly innovative nursing programs to Chestnut Hill College 
by the fall of 2025, also enlivened by the charisms of the Sisters of St. Joseph and complementing the long-standing excellence in the liberal arts, which will always be the cornerstone of this college. I am deeply honored and privileged to have the opportunity to serve as the president of Chestnut Hill College and to champion its mission. The work we do collectively together is at the heart of creating spaces where freedom is created, not as a right, as Dr. Green stated, but as a collaborative effort by a community to engage in responsible action where all are welcome and nurtured by inclusive love to serve the dear neighbor, and in so doing, also foster, as Vonnegut said, freedom and equality for all persons. I look forward to the next 100 years where we work collaboratively to champion and nurture, through action, the nature of freedom. Thank you. and join us in singing the alma mater. Julia Strafe's class of 2023 will lead us in song. Sunset, we love thee in the dawn. The walls to us are hallowed with memory of days are gone. Oh, college and teachers, and we. life, invigorated by this inspiring celebration, send us forth from this space, sincerely ready to more fully and completely embody the mission, vision, and core values of this institution we love. Equip Dr. Latimer and each one of us with every grace and blessing we need to fulfill the everyday tasks and responsibilities entrusted to us. Grant us courage in the face of challenges, perseverance amid obstacles, and give us the wisdom to make choices that align with our mission and core values. 
May our shared work contribute to the continued success and flourishing of our college community. Make us ambassadors for inclusivity. Through each of us, may we manifest an inclusive Catholic community in our everyday living, and together may we love and serve every dear neighbor without distinction. We ask this in your loving name, amen. amen. Thank you all for joining us in this festive occasion. Our distinguished guests wearing regalia will begin the recessional in just a few moments. Please remain seated until the recessional party has left Martino Hall, and then you are all invited to join us in the rotunda for a reception. President Latimer, will you show us the way?